Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash ham nation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 100, May 29th, 2013. We present our 100th show. Good evening, everybody. It's a very special, historic night. It's the 100th broadcast of Ham Nation from the Twit Network. We're so happy, so thrilled, and I, I think a little bit surprised that we made it this far and it's all turned out so well, but it's because of one thing, and that's the team behind us. Uh, this started out with uh, Leo's dream of having a ham radio show, and... Uh, he said, you do it. Well, I, of course, am not the show. We started picking on the great people that make ham radio happen, and that's what goes on. And we're, we continue to add people, as you'll start seeing tonight, some of the uh, great people behind the scenes. And one of the major ones is Gordon West. Gordon, how are you tonight from Costa Mesa on this historic night? I am fine. <laughs> Happy 100 to those of you out there watching and listening. Thanks for making this show as popular as it is. Back to you, Bob. Okay, Gordon. Well, we uh, we will be back to you for some other things in a minute. Let's go down to Mississippi. George, how are you doing? Is uh, the smoke uh, subsided for a little bit? You okay? Yeah, it's subsided, Bob. We blew out the candles in here, but we still have the balloons and the fireworks going. If I had known Gordo was going to use sound effects, I would have had some queued up and ready to go. <laughs> you do have a lot of sound effects. We know that. <laughs> That's great. Well, we, we get so many people asking us questions about how the show started and, and how it all came to being. We'll try to get to some of that as we get through it. I can only tell you here in the beginning that it started with the Triangulation 8. If you haven't seen that show, go back and visit Triangulation 8 uh, of the Twit Network, and you'll see where it started. That's where the dream of, of Leo's came about, and that so many in the chat room were hams. And uh, uh, the first guy I called when I left the cottage that day was Joe, and Joe Walsh was just wonderful and gave us his support. And um, uh, we'll... Uh, We'll roll this little piece of video. He he was going to be here, but he said, I think we're going to have a little problem. I think we're going to start rehearsals with the Eagles on that day. Guess what? They did. But we had backup. Uh, he did a little video when we were out a few weeks ago on tour. So let's roll this little piece of video. We're here in St. Louis. Hi, everybody. It's Joe Walsh here with Bob Heil. I'm WB6ACU, and you know who he is. He's had some nine call. It's a dog call. That's Canine. right. That he's had forever. Bob had his ham call before there even were radios. That's right. Now, before he was born. <laughs> it was issued on my birth certificate. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I want to wish uh, everybody at Ham Nation uh, very happy 100th anniversary, and uh, I'm glad I helped get it started. You did. And we converted Leo. Leo, you did. We converted Leo over to ham radio. And many others. As a rel he wasn't really a religious man, but we've converted him. He is now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. An analog man's doing well? Analog man's doing great. Yeah. And alive and well. All right. See you on, on the airways. Somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. you got to go play a show. I do. All right. I do. <laughs> hey. Thank you. Oh, Joe is uh, such a great guy. Uh, one of the things that he did while we were there, um, he took this PR-40 from his uh, performance. He had extras, and he signed it. And he put Ham Nation number 100. And at the end of the show, during uh, George's contest tonight, 
George, he's going to give this away. So don't leave because you might have a chance to win this very special mic. And I hope it doesn't show up on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> We're very excited. Uh, before we get uh, to uh, Gordon's uh, uh, shots, I, want, I get two real quick things to show you. I was very impressed about this, and, and I know Leo is, is going to want to know about this guy. We had a guy at Dayton come up. He was from Kuwait, and he said the only thing that he gets over there about ham radio is ham nation. So much so, he became an amateur radio operator, and uh, we're so thrilled that he watches the show. And uh, this is him right here. And we're so thrilled to have these kind of things happen because we don't, we don't often hear of, of the many people that are out there. And Michelle is a great guy. And uh, he, uh, he sent these uh, pictures along when he got back from Dayton. And uh, we're so happy that we could bring him this great show. And, and you might work him. 9K2MX is his call. 9 K2MX. So we want to we want to congratulate him and and all of the things that that he does to uh, get yeah. into amateur radio because it's very okay. difficult. And uh, one other thing is a little video. This is real short and it's cute. W8FG and his wife came into the booth and they got a two year old daughter and she hardly can speak. But what did they teach her first to say CQ? Now you got to listen close. Check this out. Go ahead. Alright, one more time. Can you say real big? What do you say? Real big. Thank you. What do you tell the mic? Thank you. Very good. <laughs> What's her name? Maggie. Her name is Maggie. And Maggie how, how old is she? She's two. She's two. Yes. Well, uh, you have to be very proud of her, Seth. Very proud. Yeah, I'm determined she'll be a ham one day. Yes. <laughs> Maybe when she's three? Yes. Can, we hope. <laughs> we do hope so. We'll bring her back to see you. Thank we're, you. We're hoping by next hamvention she'll Bye, be Maggie. Code. What? She's going to do it again. Huh? Say it again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Oh man, that's great stuff. Gordon, does it get any better than that? It it does not. Although we had quite a following at Dayton Bob of Ham Nation with 250 off roaders. Now these 250 right. off road ham radio operators have an organization that well you see the sign behind me offroadham.com and uh, Brian if you'll roll the um, uh, still shots you've got to see some of these Jeeps as well as a Toyota and a couple of other vehicles that they roll. Now this is the Bumblebee hey, Jeep you that's run and uh, run is K4 ORV and uh, the next shot uh, Brian gives a little better perspective of all the gear that goes into uh, some of these Jeeps. Wow, look at that. He's got HF, he's got VHF, he's got GPS, he's got APRS. He's got a red computer to go along with uh, Ron's yellow Bumblebee Jeep, K4ORV. All right, there's more. Now, look at this capacity hat. Now, this is the capacity hat all the way down on the mass. That's Russ, W8UZZ. We're taking a look at this. He can extend that up about 25 feet, not when he's driving. And he puts out a monster signal on 75 meters as well as 40 meters. And he's got, uh, well, one more shot there, Brian. He's got the amplifier in the back of his rig to uh, make sure it puts out big time. There again is Ron's Bumblebee Jeep, and they're looking for more off-road hams. So go to offroadham.com to learn more about it. Now, here you go. You ever wonder why people have a big signal on 40? What do you think, Bob? That is just about a natural quarter wavelength and uh, just one of the examples of uh, mobile at rest with the antenna fully deployed. So off-road hams, K4ORV, leading the charge. Thank you for making uh, this such a great uh, time in Dayton. Also, thanks for the great hat. Uh, when I take my little off-road dune buggy, you'll see it next week. We'll wear the hat. So keep watching. Happy 100th, Bob, and I'll turn it back to you. Go ahead, Bob. All right, Gordo. Well, I know you had a great time at, uh, at Dayton. It's always such a, a wonderful 
wonderful thing. Yeah, it's busy, and uh, I get all these uh, these these guys come back later. Oh, you were too busy. Oh, they should stop by. Just barge in and say hello. And this year, thanks to Exceed and the people at Viasat, we were able to bring the show uh, onto Leo's uh, tech guy on the weekend, and we're so thrilled about that. Uh, Exceed is a great service, and you know, satellites never work for an in internet, well, not very well, but uh, as you see, it's very, very cool, and uh, you can uh, can have a great satellite signal no matter where you are, and, and have uh, wonderful video and uh, high-speed internet. How cool is that? But it's all new technology. That's the whole deal. The technology is so important. Well, we have another wonderful friend in Larry Johnston. Larry's been a friend of ours for a long time. He uses our microphones on stage because Larry, K4EB, that stands for excellent bass in my world and probably his. He's the bass player for a great band, 38 Special. Larry, how are you tonight? Nice to have you here. I'm doing great. And the first thing I want to say is... Uh, Who'd ever thunk it? 100 episodes. I mean, you guys are really, uh, y'all are doing it. You know, uh, what y'all have done for ham radio has been uh, the bomb. Uh, and that's all I can say about that. I mean, uh, 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 you brought new hams out of the woodwork and uh, probably re-energized older hams that uh, probably didn't even care anymore. But you guys are really doing it. And uh, all I can say is uh, congratulations for 100, uh, uh, I want to say 100 years, but it's only 100 episodes. <laughs> well, thank you, Larry. We appreciate that. Well, you remember you were one of the beginning uh, guests and you came on and you've been supportive of it. I know you travel a lot and you do a lot of work on the road and, and portable antennas. And uh, what's your latest innovation of uh, portable rigs that you're doing? What are you, what's happening? Well, I still do the D-Star thing when I can, uh, but most of the time we're so dang tired, you know, uh, I don't mess with it, but uh, today, the, this afternoon, I was sitting out there grilling uh, uh, some uh, pork tenderloin, and uh, I had a portable station set up uh, right in my driveway with uh, an antenna that uh, uh, I mean, I'd set up. Uh, I bought it from Amateur Radio Store. Uh, it cost like 250 bucks, and... Uh, I use uh, one of my uh, favorite radios, ICOM 7600, 100 watts, and I'm just sitting there in my driveway uh, talking to guys in uh, uh, Minsk, uh, uh, Belarusia, and uh, whatever they call it now, you know, uh, and uh, made a few contacts with Italy and stuff like that with just 100 watts with just a little stupid little vertical. And, uh, you know, uh, that's what I'm saying is, uh, you know, you can, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to have a big gun station to have fun. Well, we proved that here uh, uh, some shows ago where we actually built a, a 40 meter dipole with uh, with Leo. And then uh, I put a dipole up here on 40 meters. And uh, at last Dayton, uh, Roger at RNL, I said, find me a rig for 150 bucks. And he found a, a 730. And we put that thing on the air. And the first station we worked was in England. And it proves to everybody exactly what you said, Larry. You don't need to be spending a bunch of bucks. Uh, yeah, it's fun to have all the dials and all the stuff and all this and that and that. But it boils down to one thing. You want to make a contact. And uh, you're doing it well with your vertical. That's great. Now, it, what do you take on the road? Do you take any kind of portable antenna and stuff on the road? Well, actually, I, I use a, a, a portable. Uh, I, I carry Mac computers with me, and I access my uh, home station uh, via Skype and uh, and uh, uh, what do they call that? Team Viewer. Uh, Neil uh, Campbell, K3NC, with uh, Flex Radio Group, hooked me up with that. And uh, every once in a while, uh, uh, time permitting, of course, I can uh, I can uh, access my radio, uh, which is a Flex. And, you know, I've I've got uh, probably thirty different radios, so uh, <laughs> my preference uh, does not belong anywhere. But for remote, uh, that's the best thing. 
Well, radios are like baseball caps and shirts. You just have them for whatever the occasion. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, and I got a baseball cap for you. You're a St. Louis fan, but uh, see this right here? That's yeah. the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, they're for real this year. That's right. About time, huh? Well, I like the cap you got on, too, 38 Special. Talk to me a little bit about what 38 Special's uh, doing this summer. I'm sure you got a lot of shows lined up. Anything big and special that we need to know about? Yeah, well, I noticed you guys are wearing party hats. This uh, 38 <laughs> Special is a big party also. Uh, uh, well, we, uh, you know, we, we go out and uh, we're coming soon to a town near you. And uh, most people leave happy. You know, uh, uh, they leave entertained and drained. Uh, I'll, I'll just say I mean, that. How many years have you been uh, been doing this? How many years has 38 Special been uh, going and you've been playing bass for them, Larry? Uh, we're talking almost 35 years. Wow. Wow, that's really great. Well, if if the uh, fans of Ham Nation have not seen a 38 Special Live, you need to do that because it is really a great rock and roll show. And uh, I I admire you guys for playing all the oldies and making it happen at every show. But more than anything, I appreciate your friendship to uh, the show, your personal friendship to Sarah and I. And we'll be out to see you somewhere this summer. So stay in touch and uh, we'll catch you on the air sometime. Uh, with that great little antenna you got. And uh, I appreciate your time uh, here on Ham Nation for this very special show, Larry. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, uh, uh, QSL. <laughs> I won't say 10-4. <laughs> That's an ugly word. But uh, thank you very much, my friend. And uh, as always, uh, uh, congratulations again for uh, 100 episodes of Ham Nation. And uh, maybe I'll be on the 200th one, okay? How about that? <laughs> we hope we're there. And that was nice. We uh, He just showed some of your tour schedules in the background of your website. So everybody go check it out because uh, it is a great, great band and lots of fun when you go listen to 38 Special. So thanks so much, Larry. We appreciate you being here, 7-3. Thank you. We love you guys, too. Uh, and Gordo... Uh, 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 keep up uh, with the cats there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that's great. Well, there's been a little ruckus on the old band lately. Um, <clears throat> seems like there's four guys that's caused lots of stir, and I mean big time. Let me play you something that I did last night. Check this out. Talk about a pileup. My God. This was off of 20 meters last night. And here they are. Here's Dale, K0HYD. Dale, are you uh, alive after last night? That was great. Where did he go? What about Al? Are you there? Last oh, there's night, Dale. I've, I've, survived. I've survived it here for a while. Unbe <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, it, uh, it is really unbelievable. We, uh, we've been having a great time. A uh, busy time with a couple of graduations going on in the middle of all this. But got some stats for you, Bob. Uh, amazing. As of last night, I'd worked 964 stations. Al had right around 800 and Mike uh, reported 835 and Bill, he'd worked more than 1135. What do you think? Isn't that something? That's really great. And uh, are, are you sticking around mostly one frequency of 14280 or do you, you guys move around a little bit? Oh, we move around. Basically, when we come on, we check for a clear spot. Uh, uh, the first one tries to grab 14268 if it's available, but sometimes it isn't. Uh, so uh, we were on last night on uh, 274, 278, uh, no, 260, uh, 264, 268, and uh, also on 75 and on uh, 280. So uh, that was unbelievable. Uh, big <laughs> challenge there, trying to balance uh, everything, trying to get everybody a chance to 
uh, be a part of the Ham Nation family and talk about it, but at the same time work a whole bunch of stations. But we had a really yeah. good time uh, doing that, Bob. <laughs> it was well, something else. A lot, we a lot all, of special stories, too. Well, we, we all appreciate what you're doing, and uh, I know that it takes a lot of your time, but uh, I know how much fun it is sometimes. Let's see, is Al, is Al there? Al, how are you doing? There he is. I'm here. Hi, Al. Bob. Hi, Al. <laughs> you, did you survive last night? Uh, Oh, my goodness. Not only last night, I'm still surviving tonight. And, uh, Dale, by the way, uh, I've got 1,000 contacts right now uh, as of uh, 1,012 as of a few minutes ago. And uh, it has been one of the most amazing experiences, Bob, because uh, I've never been on the end of a pileup. And uh, this is night after night of, uh, I don't know, thousands of stations. And it's just so much fun. And I, I've got to tell you something you said uh really struck home with me and that's that uh that uh it's international you know you mentioned that station and just uh maybe an hour or so ago i was talking to uh, a guy in portugal uh cp7 i don't have his call his name is philippe and uh, not only did he want to work the special event station but he wanted to tell me what a big fan of ham nation he is so it's it's really ham nations and uh it uh, it has been a great trip for all of us kind of exhausting with the websites and uh, the QSLs, and of course, uh, as you know, uh, we just had the best time at Dayton when I had uh, the other uh, net control stations out at the RV. We were operating and uh, barbecuing, and uh, just a great time. I, I want to thank you for that, and especially, can I take a second and just say thank you to Leo Laporte, the guy who has sold so many things to me over the years watching his show, thousands of dollars. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank him for for uh, everything he's doing for ham radio that's great and by the way i didn't get the memo on the hats but i do since uh, danbury is the hat city i managed to find something from the chinese new year it's not quite as scary as the hat that gordo was wearing but uh what do you think of that <laughs> <laughs> well we're uh, where, where are you going to be tonight when we uh, now, uh, as i understand you guys are not going to do your nets tonight. You're going to let the people uh, come in and work it because you've only got, what, three or four hours, depending on what part of the country you're in. And the uh, special event ends at midnight. Is that right, Dale? Is it midnight that it ends uh, Central Time? Yes, Bob. It's uh, midnight local time. So Al will be the first one to uh, uh, go off of the special event. I'll be next uh, along with Bill. And then Mike will be on for quite a while, another couple of hours after both of us so it's gonna be nice well we'll We're, all be looking for you so we can uh, work all of you and I, I know a lot of the guys worked uh, worked all four of you last night right in succession I was listening to several things that happened uh, one of those was in was it New Zealand uh, Dale that uh, that was one of the four uh, that worked all four of you last night uh, yes, that was uh, fantastic. Last night we were trying to congratulate everybody that came in and said, hey, you're number four. And uh, we did that uh, one more time. And uh, lo and behold, uh, we, we had a ZL2 station from <laughs> New Zealand. And, you know, we talked wow. to a station in Rome and a guy uh, on the Canary Islands, and they were all Ham Nation fans, and they were all going for the uh, special 100th broadcast certificate, uh, Bob. Wow. Well, my congratulations to all of you. We're going to have uh, Bill and Mike on next week, uh, next uh, Ham Nation show. But uh, I wanted to get you guys on here and, and thank you very much for all. So Al will be looking for that monstrous signal. I, Al, I think you have an illegal antenna. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got a Step IR DB18E and... Uh, I'll tell you something. You know who I worked? I worked Mike out at Step IR. He wanted to get in on the action, too. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. You have got a ferocious signal into the Midwest. So, guys, thank you very much for the uh, all of the fun and the activity and, and spurring ham radio to the max. And, of course, all of us owe it 
all to Leo Laporte for this beautiful time and the production from Brian and Alex and Karsten and John and all of the guys back in Petaluma. Those guys do a lot of work. I, nobody knows. They just, you can't realize what craziness, and especially tonight, because I'm switching all these spike Skypes around and they're doing it. So we all, we amateur radio, we owe all of the, the guys in Petaluma a great thanks. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, look for you after a while on the nets. Uh, on the, well, they're not nets now. They're special events and a few hours left. So 7-3 uh, to you. Any uh, parting words, Dale? Uh, just had one special story, I think, from out, of, uh, out in Seattle. Uh, it was the night before last, I believe. A gentleman, uh, he'd been uh, tinkering with electronics for years. Uh, so he found uh, Leo's Twit Network and he was watching and looking around and he stumbled onto Ham Nation. He started watching that every week and he got his license and he just got his general the uh, week before and by golly he worked one of the he worked several of the Ham Nation special event stations here this week. So that was a really nice story. He was really appreciative of Ham Nation, Bob. Go. It's wonderful. Al, what about you? You got any parting words of special uh, significance? Yeah, I can only echo what uh, Dale said. And it, it's very special to be a part of that because uh, I mentioned this when I was out in Dayton. I said, I've been a ham for 54 years. And uh, I feel like uh, in some small way, I'm uh, just by helping Mike out with the Mets here, I'm giving back a little bit. And I've heard that Dale and Mike and Bill, we've all heard that same story over and over again about how Ham Nation has kindled an interest, restarted a ham career that sort of was put aside for a while, and it just feels so good to get people involved in ham radio again. You're doing a great job, Bob. Well, thank you. And, and we see the numbers from the FCC. I mean, the, there's no question about it that amateur radio license is up. And Ham Nation, because of Leo Laporte, is a part of that. And we're talking several thousand. We're not talking two or three people. So uh, thanks for all what you guys do. And uh, we'll go from there. Look at there. Yeah. <laughs> all three of them. Yes. Gotcha. Well, we, uh, we appreciate so much everything. And uh, we'll make it happen. Don, how are you doing down there? Is everything okay? Are you working all these guys two or three times? Yeah, I've worked a couple of them two or three times. I finally got uh, Bill N5H tonight at 7.30, so about an hour ago. I finally got number four. And as you can see, Blind Mississippi Hambone has made an appearance. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy as, as I can be to have all four of these guys. You know, they sent me a, a personalized certificate, so I didn't have to work all four to get their certificate. But I said, I don't want to cheat. I want to I do that. And I did yeah. that. That's hours That's and right. hours of work, and I was so hoarse and frustrated and saying bad words when I was in Bill's skip zone, and finally I got him today. So, yeah, I'm just happy as I can be, and I'm just as proud as I can be, A, to be your friend, Bob Heil, and Gordon West, <laughs> and George, and all four of our net control operators now, and, uh, and to be part of this uh, great thing. And uh, it's our 100th episode. I'm wearing a 50-year-old hat. What could be better? <laughs> That's right. Nothing. That's right. Well, Don, you came about because of uh, of Newsline, and we have to thank Bill Pasternak, although he's kind of the silent partner in all of this because he he's in the background. But boy, his Newsline is just massive across the globe to what uh, amateur radio is all about. And there's that guy from Kuwait talking about that, too. He says, because of all of this, they are able to get information into that country. Well, otherwise, forget it. And, uh, mm -hmm. Don, we're very appreciative of you to, to come in and do this uh, and uh, also doing the hosting when I'm out doing crazy stuff somewhere. And it's going to be a lot worse. But you guys take care of it so well. I appreciate that. I personally appreciate that. So thanks for being there and making it all happen. And your talent is very well respected here. Well, thank you very much. You know, it's it's a labor of love. And, and speaking of Newsline, you know, this is the 100th episode of Ham Nation. Bill has been doing Newsline for 35 years and has never missed a week. Talk about longevity. Uh, I think I think Ham Nation is going to be around long after we're gone, too. So uh, I see a good future in this. Well, we hope so, and uh, we appreciate everything. Well, what kind of news have you got 
this week from Bill and Newsline, Don. Funny you should ask. Let's roll the video. From Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 1,867, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, May 29, 2013. Several radio services, including broadcasters and hams, responded to several days of severe weather, including tornadoes, hit the Central Plains. Amateur Radio Newsline's Mark Abramovich, NT3V. The pictures seen on cable and network news channels of the devastation in Oklahoma have been gut-wrenching. But emergency officials are saying the warnings and local broadcast coverage by radio and television probably saved hundreds, if not thousands, of lives. Amateur radio played a part in the initial hours after the tornado went through the community of Moore in the Oklahoma City area. Kevin O'Dell, N0IRW, is the American Radio Relay League section manager for Oklahoma. He tells Newsline in an interview that the real call-up came through the Amateur Radio Emergency Service for operators to assist the Red Cross chapter. We've had one specific request of Aries to assist with the Red Cross in communications between the chapter office and their feeding area down at the incident command post, and uh, we secured from that. Odell says the operation secured Wednesday night. I do know of a couple of instances where there have been some other folks that have been involved, not for any real length of time, but once Comel got their systems up and running, uh, everything was in pretty good shape. Odell, who lives about 75 miles north of the tornado-affected region of the state, says while the devastation is vast, it is confined to a narrow area, and that enabled emergency crews to keep police, fire, and emergency radios up and running and restore wireless service rapidly. What a lot of people don't understand is that this is a 17 mile long track but it's only a couple of miles wide you get outside of that and and things work pretty well so just the communication within that strip is the only thing that's been really a question odell says the oklahoma city moore area has lots of experience dealing with tornadoes this isn't their first rodeo these people know what they're doing they're very good at it the communication systems, because of this and because of events that they've had in the past, especially the May 3rd, 1999 storm that went basically through a very similar part of, of Moore, you know, a lot of the communication systems have been hardened a whole lot and have also been decentralized so that the infrastructure issue isn't quite as big a deal as you would have in a much broader situation. Odell describes the people of Oklahoma as resilient, although he concedes there are a couple people who lost their homes in 1999 and on the same site in the most recent tornado. Odell says he wouldn't be surprised if some of them took this second hit as a divinely inspired message to move elsewhere. For the Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Mark Abramovich, NT3V. Ham radio operators remain on alert in case they're needed. The 2013 Dayton Hamvention is in the history books, and Amateur Radio Newsline was there with microphones in hand. We have a complete wrap-up on Dayton in the full edition of this week's Amateur Radio Newsline report, coming to a repeater near you and available online 24-7 at our website. And before we go, one last reminder, there are only a few hours left to nominate a young ham, 18 or under, for this year's Amateur Radio Newsline Young Ham of the Year Award. The closing date is midnight, May 30th, and any nominations postmarked or sent to us electronically after that date will not be counted for this year's judging. Full details and a nominating form can be found at our website, www.arnewsline.org. Just click the YHOTY button. And we look forward to receiving your nominations and hope to see you for the presentation at the Huntsville Ham Fest in August. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news brought to you each and every week for 35 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time right here on Ham Nation. All right, there you go. And it uh, looks like my return Skype is frozen, so I'm not sure if you can see me or not. But uh, you see the Oklahoma flag over my shoulder. That, of course, is my home state. The first uh, scenes that you saw there were uh, Shawnee, Oklahoma. That's my hometown. And I worked about a half a mile from uh, that school that you saw on the end uh, from, from, of the Moore uh, tornado. I'm leaving in the morning to go back to uh, Shawnee, Oklahoma for my 35th high school reunion. And, you know, last week, I, I, or was it last week? Yeah, I believe it was that uh, we showed the uh, Red Cross numbers and everything where you could uh, donate to. And uh, some of those people uh, that were watching did donate, and uh, we certainly appreciate that. So uh, there you go. Now let's talk about ICOM. Do you have spring fever? 
You're looking for a new toy to take with you on the road? Maybe you can hit up this season's Ham Fest. They're all well underway. Check out ICOM. Some great handhelds in route, in location, and on the go. Let's talk about the D-Star ID31A. So many features for on-the-go operation. This is an amazing radio, built-in GPS. It shows your current position and altitude for uh, reporting. It's compact. It's lightweight. It's waterproof. That's the amazing thing here. It's easy to use. Directional keypad. It has a backlit LCD. It uh, is really easy to use at night. It has a micro SD card slot for programming and other things. And an auto-repeater list for quick access to nearby D-Star repeaters comes preloaded with this, this repeater database. You uh, get your GPS fix and tell it to find yourself, and bang, it loads your local repeaters up. Also comes with the uh, cloning software right there. Make sure you visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation. A lot more info on ICOM's line of HF, VHF, and UHF radios. You can also enter ICOM's weekly drawing for the ICOM swag. T-shirts, hats, a whole lot more. You can win the monthly grand prize drawing for the free ICOM radio. It's icomamerica.com slash hamnation. All the official rules are there. Check out all of ICOM's previous drawing winners. Sign up and good luck. And now I believe George is here with information on the big radio giveaway. George? Yeah, as Don mentioned, you have a chance to win ICOM swag when you register after each episode of Ham Nation. But they're also giving away a radio a month. And for May, there's five episodes of Ham Nation. And this is number five, so it's your last opportunity to register. And you could win this month an ICOM ICV8000 75-watt VHF mobile. It's the most powerful mobile in its class. It has dynamic memory scan, exclusive weather alert scan, easy operation, and it's got the power you need for the ultimate two-meter mobile experience. That's the ICV8000 75-watt mobile uh, for this month's giveaway. And you can register at icomamerica.com slash hamnation. Go there this evening after the show and get your name in the hat. And uh, my Skype feed is frozen here, too. I'm looking at a tornado. But uh, what more appropriate uh, to do, Bob, than uh, maybe have a little smoke and solder? Let's do it. You got plenty of smoke, I bet you, and you can supply the solder. Let's see what's happening. Yeah, this week we're going to end the very first episode of Smoke and Solder. I made a mistake. I failed to record the sound while I was doing some of the work, so I went looking for sound effects to replace it with. And that mistake turned out to be a lucky accident. Today on Smoke and Solder, it's tool time, and we'll begin with a little quiz. Who can identify these? I'll give you one clue. I bet Jerry Ellsworth knows what they are. A good set of screwdrivers is a great place to start for building your tool kit. Let's look at the various types. You're going to want a flathead screwdriver for sure. That's the most basic one there is. If you attended Sony Broadcast School, you might call this a frat braid screwdriver. He's talking big Latin. I don't know what he's saying. At least that's the way it was spelled in the books. As Bob told us in a recent episode, never throw away anything that you might could use again, and I'm a firm believer in that. That's why I'm taking apart this old computer power supply that's now defective, and I'm going to see what's in there that I might scavenge for a future project. Now, my friend Jim, N5SPE, he's one of my co-hosts on AmateurLogic.tv. He produced a segment several years ago on an alternative method of parts recovery that he believes he got from Mike from some of the early Solder Smoke podcasts. Uh, basically what it consists of, or what we're talking about doing here, is taking this propane torch that you see, oh, no. firing it up, putting it to the back of this printed circuit board that has a lot of capacitors, resistors, inductors, and heating up the back really good, small pieces stay hot for quite a while. And so you can just really pull those right out of there. Whoa, okay. Boys and girls, don't try this at home. We'll want to convert this AC voltage into a DC voltage, so we'll use a full wave bridge rectifier, which is actually four diodes arranged so that we can take advantage of both halves of the 60 cycle waveform. Our AC voltage will feed into the two sides of the bridge rectifier, and then the other two legs of the rectifier will give us our DC output. The bottom leg here will be our negative voltage, and the positive leg 
will come out the top. Once we put a load on here, we'll see that voltage come back down some. We could take this black lead, hook it up there, and the red lead. <laughs> Remember how we were talking last week about a capacitor holding a charge? Well, there's a good example. You want to be careful to discharge those before you go in working on electric components that have large value capacitors. Now there's one more source of power that uh, many of us have available to us and uh, I tried this out on field day a few years ago and it worked just fine. Yeah, N5 ZNO, this is W5 JDX coming in loud and clear here. You're my first contact for field day. I am operating a lawnmower portable. We'll install the regulator, two capacitors, and resistor to this little piece of PC board and connect the wires that go to the regulator circuit. Clamp on ferrite beads can be very handy around the shack. I use a number of these on my 80 meter loop antenna uh, right below the feed point of the antenna and that helps keep the RF from coming back down the feed line into the shack here. It wasn't a big problem on that particular antenna. I also have a number of them on the power feed coming into my house and the reason I did that is to keep noise that might be coming in the power line down the street a piece from getting into the house and thereby having my antenna pick it up. Of course, you've got other lines coming into the house. The cable TV is also a good place that you could put some of these and might as well put them on your phone lines too. This week on Smoke and Solder, we're gonna talk about a subject that might make some of you uncomfortable, but it's one that's near and dear to all our hearts. That's right, it's the volt -ohm meter. Gordo suggested that I might want to talk about measuring the resistance or the current of a battery. I decided to do them one better. We'll measure the resistance of the AC wall outlet here. That will connect to an audio cable which I'll plug into my iPhone as our audio source. On the secondary side of the transformer we connect one side to our plus 5 volts and the other side of the secondary will run over into the power supply input of our audio oscillator. Let's get a little modulation from the iPhone. This is W5JDX testing my cheap AM transmitter. CQ, 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 AM. <laughs> this is W5JDX testing my cheap AM transmitter. This week on Smoke and Solder, we're going to attempt to build something I've never made before. It's a simple electromechanical device called a speaker, which I'm sure everyone has. But I've never built one, so this is going to be a new experience. I was thinking about the, the materials that I would need, and in particular the cone. I've got the speaker connected to my amplifier now, so let's listen to a little bit of last week's Ham Nation on our do-it-yourself speaker. The forum there. At the Pacific Con. Um, I believe I am on tropospheric ducting as well as I'm the Saturday morning. Good morning. And uh, <laughs> we've got some exciting uh, audio that we're going to play. Hair raising audio on that Saturday morning to get everybody reared up and ready to roll. This speaker seems like it might just work for that, being that it's resonant at 700 hertz. Now, before we leave, there's just one more test that I wanted to try. While the results were far from high fidelity, at least we did prove that you could build a simple speaker at home using common materials. There are several methods we could use to get our traces onto the board. We're going to use the most primitive one of all today though. We're going to use an ink resist pen, which is just a common sharpie. That works about as well as anything else in this method. Our traces certainly look ugly enough but they should work. We're going to test them out anyway. And let's add us a Ham Nation logo to the board now. And you should always read the instructions on your etchant before you begin. 
Now this etchant will work better if it's a little bit warm and if it's agitated frequently to help the action. Get busy, you jugheads. We got a lot of work to do. Don't tell my wife, but we're going to use the porcelain sink in the bathroom for this. Well, that's better than using the stainless steel sink in the kitchen. We'll follow Radio Shack's instructions on disposing of the etchant as well. Let's connect 12 volts to this project now and see if it works. Another successful smoke and solder project. And it's bypassed with an unnecessary capacitor. I can't tell if I'm on. I guess I am. The, uh, the sky freeze is frozen here again. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And, you know, I only got through about, oh, I think, 26 episodes. So there's a lot more of that out there. That was great. Yeah, that was great. You know, I, I get a lot of questions from uh, from the viewers and the, the podcast listeners, George, about how we got together. I think it was long, I don't know, maybe show four or five. When we first started this thing, it was just seat of the pants, as it always is. But I, I knew I wanted to do some kind of a build it type thing. We had to do that. But I tried to do it. And if you want to see something really weird and funny, watch the first couple of shows where I was trying to build the cold oscillator. So you can't do it live. And I, I can't remember if you called me or I called you, but Amateur Logic came into the uh, the scene and there you were and that's how we've been together and uh, I, I it was just been such a great thing and i appreciate you so much being here for us that's really great well thanks bob yeah um you, you know we've been doing amateur logic for a number of years actually we just recently celebrated our seventh anniversary and you and i had actually talked on 80 meters before a couple of times and uh, mm -hmm. of course uh, you know i knew who you were and uh I don't think you knew who I was, but, and, and you know, we, we had just had normal ham conversations, but after the first episode of Two of Ham Nation, I sent you an email and said, congratulations on the show. I like it. And by the way, I'm, I'm doing something similar here. And, uh, you got back in touch with me after a couple of weeks and we got to talking and decided, uh, yeah, let's, let's make something. So, uh, there it is, smoke and solder. Yeah, that's what this is all about. It's a team. Everybody has a talent, and we put it all together and make it happen. And I really appreciate you uh, you doing all the, the things that you do. And I uh, I hope that uh, we'll be able to do this for years to come. Um, there again, uh, <laughs> if Leo will have us. But uh, I think we're doing good for the Twit Network. We're bringing people to his network that really wouldn't have heard of it. And uh, yet he's got millions of viewers. But uh, he can always use a few hundred more that are uh, us crazy hams that uh, love to do things. <laughs> George, you always have a contest. What do you got going this week? With, you got an ICOM contest going on, right? Oh, I've got a couple of contests going on, Bob, and some good prizes this time around. And if you, if we're going to keep doing this, I'm going to have to order another roll of solder. I've about used up one in the past 100 <laughs> episodes. Um, yeah, on, on my regular contest, I'd asked a question last week, what does Balin stand for? And uh, I had an answer from Tim, K-A-0-M-W-A, and he says, uh, Balin is, is, excuse me, balanced to unbalanced. And uh, thanks, Tim. You're going to win this uh, MFJ patch cord, which everybody needs another uh, RG58 patch cord laying around. You never know when you're going to need one. You can't have too many. So we'll be getting that out to you. And, uh, Bob, I understand you've got a special prize that we're going to give away this week. Do we ever? We have this wonderful PR40 that Joe Walsh has signed. You saw the video a little bit ago. And um, we want to give it away. That, that's, that was Joe's. And this was one that came off of his stage. And um, we, want to, uh, we want to give it to, to a deserving person, but they got to come up with, uh, with an answer. Uh, what do you think, George? I, I, I think I got a good question for everybody that they can mail to you on the answer for this. And, you know, we talked about Joe and I operating from the back of the bus and from uh, high uh, rooms in the hotels and wherever and dropping wires here and there, kind of using uh, the old uh, situation of Larry Johnston a while ago. You just throw out a wire and make it work. 
<laughs> I want to know if you guys know what rig we use to do that. What do you think, George? That's, that's a pretty good question, isn't it? I think that's a good question, Bob, and I know how to find out the answer, but uh, I'm not going to tell. They're just going to have to work for this one because that's a great prize, and <laughs> they can they can send their answers to me at hamnationcontest at gmail.com, and next week we're going to have one very happy ham. <laughs> you got that right. Okay. Well, that'll be great. And uh, we we look forward to that uh, being a big part of the show of all the time is your, uh, your great contest that you have. And we're going to start to, I know there's a lot of guys in the chat room has asked about this several times. We, we will have some of uh, our books uh, uh, for you because um, the book is, is doing very well and really uh, not because my name is on it, but it's all of the people inside that gave me these notes, some of them over 60 years old. But the science never changes. So you want to really get into this thing. There's stuff in here you never see anywhere else, and you should have seen it uh, before you started studying because it would have been so much easier. But uh, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, we had quite a team that brought that together. Uh, and 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 I really appreciate their talents. So yeah, that's a great check book, it out. Bob. Get your story. We're gonna great. we're gonna have. Uh, did, have you read any of it, George? I have. You know, I got back from Dayton and I got mine out of the suitcase there and went through it. And there's some really good information in there. Uh, regardless of what level you're at in your ham radio career, there's something in there that you can use. Maybe you knew at one time and uh, you lost your notes on it. Well, thank goodness Bob saved his notes because it's, it's a really good book, and congratulations on that. Uh, I want to give away one more thing, Bob. You got, you got another one. I know you do. I've been holding this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to be giving away another ICOM rig. It's the IC7200 here, the rugged uh, HF and 6-meter uh, mobile or base rig. And we're packaging it up for field day. Um, Amateur Logic has uh, teamed up with ICOM. And Gigaparts is going to put us a custom shop paint job on this. It'll be in this uh, olive drab green or in uh, Vietnam era uh, camouflage or uh, digital desert camouflage. And we've got some more prizes to go with that because we want somebody to have a really nice field day. We're going to uh, include uh, from Gigaparts a Radio Waves DX80 antenna and some uh, really good quality mastering guy rope. And MFJ came in, too. They're giving us a power supply to put with it. It's the MFJ 4230MV, a great, really small little switching supply, and some coax cable, and uh, their big ear portable HF antenna, which is the two 18-foot rabbit ears with a coil in one side. Uh, really easy to set up and get on the air quick. And we've got one other thing that's going with that, and that's a Howl Sound ProSat 3. So somebody's going to have a really nice field day this year. And the drawing is actually going to be done on the 8th of June. And it'll be announced in uh, the episode on the 15th of June of AmateurLogic.tv. So you've got roughly a week to get your name in the hat there if you haven't already. Only uh, one entry per contestant. And you can find the details at AmateurLogic.tv slash contest. Someone's going to have a nice field day. You know... If I was going to take something out for field day, Bob, this would probably be my first choice here because it's just so uh, well-built and rugged. And I know that's a real popular rig, you know, with a lot of guys that are doing field work. So uh, throw your name in the hat. Come on over and uh, have a look at the website. And uh, who knows? You could be the lucky winner. Hey, that's what it was made for us to beat up out there in the in the plain. So we're going to have some fun uh, giving that away here, and uh, we're going to have um, uh, Nick Tusa, and um, um, Nick was on a couple of uh, shows back, and he and George Meyer are going to tell you about this great field day at uh, West Shum's. Uh, farm it's it's going to be incredible we're going to run central electronics old 1948 through about 1958 rigs i can't wait and you can join us and uh, uh, nick will uh, will give you all the details and uh, either next week or the following week they'll be on with us to tell us more about that incredible field day uh, 
Well, thanks, George, for all you do. And, uh, you know, I, I found um, I, I found you on 38 uh, 50 one night, and I found you down on, what, 37, 78 or so on, several other places. But you and I landed on 38 50 one night, and we, and we heard this, this uh, commotion of uh, – Whatever goes on there, great people having fun. And one of them was Lady. I'm going, wait a minute. And um, uh, Gordo and George and I thought that we needed to bring uh, a lady to Ham Nation. And by golly, we did. And we found K9BIK. And it was Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. How are you, kiddo? Everything all right? Hey there, K9EID. Hi, Bob. Hi, George. And happy anniversary, Ham Nation 100th episode. We're so happy that you guys are here in the chat room and watching the show. We're all fired up and just great with, with everybody participating in the chat room. I think we might have bro broke some records here tonight, Bob. I'm not really quite sure, but we'll have to take a look at that. I am doing just wonderful. And I know we've got some questions here, but I want to get one thing out of the way real quick because it seems like... There's some frequencies people are asking for for still to get the certification. So I'm just going to go over it real quickly. 20 meters is 14,268 plus or minus. 40 meters is 7,272 plus or minus. 80 meters, 3,847 plus or minus. And possibly even 10 meters if, it's, if the band is open, band conditioning is permitting, 28,450 megahertz. So that'll take care of that. They want to know what, what special event call signs there are. So going over it real quickly here, W... I think it's W6H, Mike, N0H, Dale, W1H, Al, and N5H, Bill, which I have to go on after the show and see what I can drum up because I only have Bill and Al so far. So I'll be out there too, and perhaps I'll get on the band a little bit later on 3847. But I'll tell you what, there's some questions here. Well, the first one, Bob, what's the plan for the 200th episode anyway? <laughs> <laughs> we got to worry about 101. <laughs> oh my no, I just I just I can't help it, but you know, there's um it looks like they're wondering how do they get the certificate. If you just go on to N5H on QRZ, it'll tell you how you get your certificates and everything like that. So rather than take time that way, just go on to QRZ and and type in N5H. All the instructions will be there for you. And I'd like to just put this out to, to you, George, because um, there is so many people that says they missed the question for that mic. It was J K E six S L S asked and AK four zero zero or O O asked. He wanted to know what's the question. So I'm going to give it to you, and if you could just go over that one more time, please. Okay, I'll I'll let Bob do that. He was actually there and knows the answer to it. Bob, give us that <laughs> question one more time. <laughs> Well, in the early days when Joe and I were running around in the back of buses and staying in the hotels, we'd get the top room of a hotel and throw lines out the window. But mainly the bus and so on, we had a, a, a little rig that we used. And remember, this is the late uh, 60s into the 70s. And we want, we wanted we just ask you what kind of radio was that? What kind of transmitter was that? So there you go. Very good. Very good. Thank you for repeating that. We, we all appreciate that. So apparently it looks like that they are asking, are you, do you have any plans for operating on field day? Just curious. Anybody in the Ham Nation crew, is there any, any thoughts coming forth on that, Bob? Well, as I just stated, I am going to be at my great mentor. I've never met him, and he taught me so much because of that radio, that transmitter that I built back there. You've heard me say it so many times. It's been my college education at, at 20A. And uh, I get to spend uh, the weekend with Wes Shum. And, and if you haven't seen it, somebody asked what was my best uh, or what was my favorite ham. They're all favored. I love all of them. But I got to tell you, that one that George Meyer did about the history of single sideband was so full of just wonderful, wonderful information. You need to look that over because it tells about that whole thing. And then the next week or so, Nick came on and talked about Wes Shum. He was, he was a giant. He brought single sideband to ham radio. Now think about that. One man brought single sideband to ham radio it wasn't anybody Incredible. else him and then he had a bunch of followers the other show that i think was really great was when gordon and george and i were live in the studio with leo and we built an antenna 
Uh, George, don't you think that that was really a super show? You remember that, I'm sure. Yeah, that that was a good one, live right there in Twit. It's all. I guess it was the first time all of us got together in one location. It was. It was. And it, it was great. And there were several things that spilled out from that. So those are my favorites, uh, Cheryl. Oh, okay. Cool. Very nice to recap some of those for us, Bob. Now we have Phil coming forth here, and he types his call sign as CR7AFP. He asked many times tonight in the chat room, so I've got to put this out there. Do you know if there's any plans possibly for a Ham Nation magazine? <laughs> no. Oh, no. I don't know who <laughs> could do that. Well, wait a minute. George could do it. He doesn't have anything else. Oh, you got to be kidding. No, a, a magazine is, oh, it is, it's, there's just so much going on. Uh, Don, you, you don't have any plans for a magazine, do you? I, I spent all my spare time driving back and forth to New Orleans. So, yeah, I wish I wish we could. That'd be fun. But, yeah, that's that's a full-time effort in itself. I mean, that, that's, nope. uh, yeah, that's a toughie. I, it's a great idea, Phil. Don't, um, don't put that down. The, the ideas are great. It's the uh, making it happen. It would be uh, monumental. So, but I really appreciate your thought about that. You know, another quick question Phil asked in the chat room was, how does he get your book in Portugal? Because he's in Portugal. Is that available on Amazon.com in Portugal, or do you know, Bob? Uh, I don't know, but the, the dealers, uh, uh, Cheap Ham, uh, AES, r and I know r and ships out. Uh, just uh, call one of the dealers here. They'll ship it out to you. There you go, Phil. Hey, one more, one more quick question for you, Bob. And still coming from Phil, he says he uses the Heil Pro Set Elite with a six cartridge and an HM Pro. And he wanted to know, did you advise an, uh, another possible mic that he can use with his Kenwood TS590, TS590? What, what else could he use that you think would be uh, suitable? 590 is great. It's a half of the new 990. It's a really super uh, transceiver. I, I like to use the HM12 or the PR22, which is what this is. Either one of those work great. You might want to check that out. Very good. Very good. And I think this is going to be my last question of the night. And it's going to actually be from JKE6SLS. And I want to have to pose it to, I don't know if they'll answer or not, but it's for the back room guys at, at the Twit Cottage there. Hey, guys, is there any way you can check and see if the chat room breaks records? What kind of numbers are we at right now? Does anybody have that information there? Um, don't have that information right now, but I'm sure we could find something. Oh, 700 people right now is what Alex very, is telling me. Very good. Thank you, and nice to see you on camera there. I always, I never get to see anything except the big, large uh, background there. Thanks for coming on there. I appreciate it. And happy uh, anniversary to Ham Nation, and thanks for listening to the podcast and letting us come on all your smartphone and, and your smart devices. We appreciate it. And keep on coming back because there's always going to be more. And have a great night, 73 from Northeastern Illinois. Cheers. Thanks, Cheryl, for all you do. And you're the only one that has an engineer. We have to do all of our own stuff and set it all up, George and Gordo and myself. And you, you have your own personal engineer. It's uh, pretty cool. Dave is running around there fixing things for you. <laughs> I know there's a lot of questions out there about where did the T-shirt come from. I got to answer this because I'll have 400 emails after a while. So I'll answer it now. The T-shirt was made by my wonderful director of operations, uh, Stephen and Jerry. And, of course, the president of Heil Sound, Sarah. And they all came up with this shirt. With what you can't see is the best part. And I, I don't have it all with me, but I have this little plug hanging out the bottom. Why? Because this one, see if I can turn around here. This one has a picture. Yeah, there's an has a LED picture of the, the fin on the back, but it lights up. Could you see that, George? Uh, I can't see anything, Bob. My Skype's been kind of frozier for a while, uh -oh. but I saw it in Dayton. And, and boy, yeah, I don't know I think how I they did it. it. That, that's well, a they really did it pretty... cool look. <laughs> well, I don't think they'll build you one of those. You don't want to pay for the time they did. But anyway, the T-shirt, <laughs> call Heil Sound and talk to Stephen or Sarah. See if I don't know if they're going to make them. I really can't answer that, but there's where you're going to get it. 
and they probably can help you out. Well, listen, this has been wonderful. And thanks to everyone that has made this show. This show is not about one or two people. It's about hundreds, all of the guys in the chat room, the girls in the chat room, all of the people that have done things on the air. And, and we couldn't get them all on. We've got to have Amanda back on here. And we've got several other that we're looking to have help us bring ham radio to you in a in a way that you understand it and enjoy it more because it is an absolute incredible hobby and uh, i i applaud all of you for the tough work getting your license but you see how much fun it is and uh, i look forward to uh, hearing all of the numbers next week uh for the uh, from the uh, the net controls, those guys are going to be on. Uh, Mike will be on with Bill next week and telling you all about the finals of how many people they worked. So get on the net at frequencies. Cheryl just gave those to you, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. And, uh, what can I say? It's a it's a very cool night for me uh, to be here in the seat that we started this thing with. Just me, and I, I didn't know where it was going. I just knew that I could rely on my great friend Joe Walsh to do the first show. And Leo helped me on the second and third. And Leo and I didn't know where it was going. But now we have tens of thousands of you watching this every night. And we don't know how many on the replays. So it's, it's a very cool thing. And uh, my honor to bring it to you. I'm sorry I'm not here every week. But I do have other things that people are dragging me at, and we try to make it happen. And that's why it's a team. Uh, we can't all be here. Gordo has to do things. George has to do things. Don has things. Cheryl has some things. So we're all doing other things. But the main thing about it Happy is 100, that you. Happy 100th, Bob. Good to see you guys <laughs> hey, all thanks. out there on Ham Nation. And uh, I hope you have 100 more. And enjoy. That's my Good engineer. Good to see you all. That's the engineer. 73. <laughs> Okay, we'll keep it all tuned up. 7-3, everybody. We'll see you on the air after a while. And um, keep watching. Turn Ham Nation on to all of your friends. Let them know what's happening. And uh, we'll sign off from Pleasant Hope, population 614. <laughs> and we'll fire up all this stuff behind me. And yes, it all works. And we'll see what we can do tonight. 7-3, everybody. This is K9EID in Pleasant Hope, Missouri. Bye-bye for now. Bye -bye.